No, 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 no! Hello everybody and welcome back to the Explained series. And in today's episode we are taking a look at a horror series called Needle Mouse. And before you rule this out as another generic Sonic EXE adaptation, I highly encourage everyone to keep an open mind as we do dive into this piece of analog horror. Because for the most part, Sonic EXE content has been around for quite some time with one of the first pieces of Sonic EXE content coming out around 10 years ago, starting as a horror game that was made popular by none other than Markiplier himself. Get away! I can't run away! I'll run towards you! However, it was very surprising to find an entire catalog of tapes based on a horror game that came out around a decade ago. And what I found digging through these tapes was something that I thought was worth sharing with you guys. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe, I cover all sorts of analog horror videos on this channel, like The Walton Files, Harmony and Horror, and most recently, The Mandela Catalog. So if you're into analog horror or just want to hang out, um, be sure to subscribe, it'd be great to have you. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and this is Needle Mouse Explained. In the first episode, we're meted with a staticky rendition of Sonic, making his way through the first act of the Marble Zone. The gameplay proceeds as normal for about 10 seconds, until we are greeted with a flash of glaring eyes staring at us from within the confines of the game. A few moments later, Sonic passes a cell embedded into a brick wall, and the screen freezes. And from out of that cell are emitted these two words, I'm trapped. Followed by this. I've been trapped here for 30 years. Do you know how long that is? For you, I can imagine. Time flew by. You have a family. Good for you. I miss my family. I miss them so much. Dad. Mom. Lily. No one knows what happened that night. Except you. I hate you. You took everything from me. But don't you worry, Luther, because I'm coming for you. And when I do, I'm taking you with me. Then we can be together again, just like before. I will never be alone again. We can suffer together. I will make you suffer. And then the figure emits this piece of verbal dialogue. I am going to find you. So from what we can gather, the spirit delivering this piece of dialogue has been trapped behind a screen for the past 30 years, yearning for their family, their father, their mother, and Lily. And the only person that knows what even happened that night is a person named Luther, filled with rage, torment, and anguish. The only thing left to do is to make Luther suffer. The only person that knows what happened that night. A night that somehow left this spirit trapped behind a digital wall. And then the spirit goes on to repeat the phrase, don't think you can run from me. In the second episode titled Got You, things pick off in the same fashion. A battle with Eggman that ends in failure leads us to another set of dialogue from the spirit. I can still feel the day. I remember everything that happened. It plays in my head. Over and over and over. The screen glitches out and we're met with a psychotic, grinning Sonic staring directly at us. And we're met once again with another bit of dialogue telling us that Michael was there. Michael was one of the people that was at the night where everything went wrong. The spirit goes on to say that Michael did nothing to help, and then the spirit proceeds to say that they took care of him. The following footage shows us what the spirit did to Michael. Michael being another person the spirit blames for the events that unfolded 
that night. The spirit then proceeds to show something horrifying to Michael on his screen, intentionally making Michael's last moments of life truly petrifying. We are then shown the monstrosity the spirit turned Michael into, a disfigured, grinning replica of Knuckles, thus trapping him within the confines of the game, right alongside the spirit. We are then given another piece of dialogue from the spirit. The longer you wait to tell the truth, the more people you care for get hurt. And after I'm done with them, I will come for you. So essentially the spirit is warning Luther what will happen if he continues to deny the truth of what happened that night. The spirit warns Luther what will happen if he denies to reveal the truth. The truth of what happened that night. The reason the spirit has been pushed off the brink of its own insanity. This spirit has been turned into a monster, craving justice. In the third episode titled, No Way, it begins with more gameplay of a Sonic game that is immediately interrupted by Michael. Again, Michael being the person who was just trapped inside of the game and turned into Knuckles. Michael freezes the game and states the following. I can hear everything. People chatting, people enjoying themselves, life, moving on, but I'm stuck. So as we know, Michael has been trapped inside of the game for who knows how long now. But something strange is happening to Michael. Michael is able to hear the outside world, even from the prison in which he resides. He says that he can hear people talking, people enjoying themselves, and he is stuck inside of this game. He can hear life moving on, which makes this hell that he's been put in all the worst. And Michael is left staring at a photograph. A photograph of him and his family. Staring at the photograph, he utters the words, I'm scared. As the spirit appears behind him responding, Don't be. After all, you only have yourself to blame. Michael stares at the picture once again, focusing on the man he used to be. Now trapped in the body of a disfigured version of Knuckles, trapped behind a black mirror. The spirit then tortures Michael with a flood of images to the point where his eyes begin to bleed. Michael then begins to plead. This isn't fair. I don't want to be here. I miss my family. My wife. I want to go home. And suddenly the torture stops and Michael's form is turned gray, his eyes now missing. The spirit tells him, don't you dare talk to me about fairness. Then the screen glitches and says one last thing, there is no God, only me. The fourth installment begins rather differently this time around. The tape starts off with an old commercial for an upcoming Sonic and Knuckles video game. Also comes with lock-on technology. Sonic and one pawn of evil. Knuckles to play in a Sonic evil. Two worlds and some Sonic evil. Rise. A commercial that gets progressively more distorted, repeating the words, Sonic evil. However, perhaps the most important part of this installment is a missing poster for a person named Sarah. Last seen November 29th, 1963. And immediately after we are shown the missing poster, we are shown this piece of text as well. This is where he buried me, in 1963. This building was built there. To think after all this time, this is how it would be brought back. I don't care anymore. Up until now, I was toying with you, but now I'm done playing. I already got Michael. What makes you think I won't go after you? I know where you live. And so it is in this tape that we learn that the spirit trapped within a sonic model is a woman named Sarah who was killed in 1963. Killed and buried by a man named Luther. And Michael, the person trapped within Knuckles now, was there. Michael was there at the night Sarah was killed but did nothing to stop or even help her. And so Sarah was killed and buried in a field by Luther, only to take the form of a sonic model once a Sega building was built on top of the place 
where her body remained. And now that Sarah has Michael, the only thing left to do is to go after her murderer, Luther. And the finale of Needle Mouse perhaps gives us the most information about the night Sarah was killed than we've gotten in any other episode. Within the episode titled Finale, the tape begins with once again Sonic battling Dr. Eggman. But then the tape is immediately cut out and we are shown the date that Sarah went missing. November 29th, 1963. We are then shown the face of a man we haven't yet seen before. And further on in the video, we do actually learn that this man's name is Martin. Oh, also not this Martin, but this Martin. We aren't doing the Walton Files right now. The screen crashes and Eggman stares into the camera, surrounded in darkness, and proceeds to utter a section of dialogue. Michael got it pretty easy compared to me. His death was painless. One second he was alive, and the next, Reborn. I didn't get it so easy. She said I deserved worse. I didn't even do anything. Then Sarah takes over the screen, telling the person that they're lying. The pure thought of Martin believing himself to be innocent enrages her, and she takes this as an opportunity to torture Martin. She took out my eyes. She made sure my death was slow and painful. And this is when something very unpredictable happens in the series. Martin attempts to make contact with Luther. Do whatever you do, don't play the game. That's how she's able to get to you. Don't listen to her lies. She doesn't want to reconcile. She doesn't want forgiveness. She wants to kill and add you to a part of her hell. You have to destroy the disc Luther. That way it can end this nightmare. Sarah deceived her victims by telling them that she wanted to reconcile with them. And when she gets them to finally play the game, that is how she's able to trap them within it. And then we are shown an address with a text below it saying, This is where it is. 803 Branch Lane, Kernerville, North Carolina. This is the location of the game they are trapped within. Also what's really interesting is that if we do look up this address, an actual house comes up. So this isn't like a fake address, this is an actual house that actually exists. I really hope this isn't the creator's address though, because um, it's kind of like doxing yourself. So I'm really hoping that this isn't your address. The tape progresses and Sarah's form has a horrific grin. The text above her reads, Playthrough of this game is prohibited. Turn off the game now. Martin and Michael are in the darkness together. And what plays is audio from the night Sarah was killed. So it is a little hard to hear the following dialogue, but I did do my best to caption it. I do wish she could see the idea that she runs this shit, man. It pisses me off. Man, you're back over for her just so that she walks all over you. I'm telling you, one of these days, she's gonna get what's coming to her. I don't know what we'll do with it. Or when it'll happen, but it's gonna happen. What follows is a personal recording made from Luther himself, the main person Sarah is after. The audio tape was recorded February 13th, 1995, so this tape was recorded 32 years after Sarah was killed, back in 1963. And in Luther's tape, he talks about how the secret court told him not to discuss these tapes anywhere, or to anyone that means friends and family included. The secret court told us not to discuss these tapes whatsoever, you know, anywhere, whether it be your friends, families, and here I am just adding on to that pile of tapes that shouldn't be seen or heard of. He then talks about how the disc has been haunting him for years, just having it sit in his basement, meaning that Luther is in possession of the haunted game. It's all I've been able to think about. It's it's just it's been eating me up from the inside out and just nothing there was nothing I could do about it. He also states that around thirty years ago he helped cover up a murder. That murder being 
his friend, Sarah. About 30-ish, 30, yeah, 30-ish years ago, I helped cover the murder. He talks about how the murder happened at a college party. Everyone was extremely intoxicated, but Luther states that even before the party, there was already tension within the friend group. A little college party, you know? Go to a little college party, have some fun. Things get a little too far. Too many drinks, you know? We have to get into a fight. Not just Sarah, the whole gang, you know, the whole party. I, I think, I don't know who was the one to do the final blow, but one thing that's better if she was out cold, bleeding on the carpet. Over a petty argument, Luther states that the whole party got into a fight. A fight where people were actually hitting each other, like hand-to-hand -hand combat style. He then goes on to say that he doesn't know who landed the final blow, but all he knows is that Sarah was on the ground, her corpse now bleeding. And with the level of drinks now intoxicating their bodies, they decided to bury the body so that nobody would know. Time went on, and soon everyone knew about Sarah going missing. There were missing posters of her everywhere, you know, it was at the school, uh, in the city. Sarah was killed in cold blood by three college boys, and her body was never found. Her family, her friends, her girlfriend were left to mourn their missing loved one. While these boys walked free, with no one to know what truly happened that night, except for Sarah. Although her word would never make it out of her tomb. Luther's final message in his audio recording is that he's going to destroy the tape and hopefully set Sarah and his friends free. Matt is just trying to set things straight. What I've done, what we've done, was horrible. So all I could really do is hope that by destroying that disc, it could set them free. And I could be forgiven. Essentially, Luther is trying to redeem his morality in an unforgivable situation. However, before he can even destroy the disc, the TV turns on, with the disc already inside. My God. And within seconds, Sarah then transports Martin inside of her virtual hell, and tells Martin this, don't ask for God to help you now, because in this world, I am God. The final scene in the episode is a Polaroid, a Polaroid of everyone together, titled 63 Fun Gang Forever. Luther, Sarah, Martin, and Michael, together forever. The entire gang is together again, trapped within a new world, a hell created by Sarah, with the sole purpose to torture her killers until the end of time. And so with this, the series concludes, Sarah won, her killers trapped inside a sonic hell to be eternally tortured. And so yeah, that was Needle Mouse explained. But the story does not end here. One month ago, Shut Up Joseph, the creator of the series, uploaded a video titled Season 2. And within these tapes, the story continues. Continuing with two individuals who have recently found the cursed CD. So if you guys are interested in me covering the second season of this, please let me know because I really enjoyed covering this season. So if you guys want to see season two covered, definitely let me know. But yeah, I just also wanted to say thank you for the continued support. I love covering these analog horror series for you guys. It's just overall super awesome to make these videos. I really love doing them. 
But yeah, that's everything. Uh, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, please. And um, yeah, bye.